Well, Lord, looks like we've halted another sinner on his downward path. Thank you for keeping my hand quick and steady. Thank you for providing me with another opportunity to do your good work. Another lost soul for me to redeem in your name. Amen. Glad to see you're awake, Ollie. Got a little surprise for you. Turkey eggs, four of them. You know, the Lord's mighty good to our son, providing us with eggs way out here in the middle of the prairie. You'll come to know what I mean before we get to Buke. You'll come to know a lot about that man on high before then. Who are you, anyway? My name's Hartman, Jason Hartman. Then what are you after? You, Ollie. I'm going to deliver your person back to the federal authorities in Dubuque. And on the way, I'm going to deliver your heart to the Lord. What's the matter with you? Can't you make up your mind whether you're a marshal, a preacher, or a gunslinger? <laughs> I'm a little of all three, Ollie. And I better warn you, that's a combination that's going to be mighty hard for you to beat. Morning. Oh. Morning, young man. I saw the bandages. Thought you might need some help. Well, glory be the Almighty sure watching over us today. You mark this down in your memory book, Ollie. You see, there's good all around you, and there's good in every man if it just give it a chance to come out. Now, you remind me to read you that story about the Good Samaritan out of the Bible sometime. You ever hear anything like that before, stranger? A Bible-spouting preacher hiding behind a marshal's badge. Well, I don't really know. <laughs> Listen, young man, don't pay no mind, Ollie. He's just a little hateful toward the whole world right now. But he'll be looking on the brighter side of things before we get back to Dubuque. You got quite a ways to ride. Oh, we ain't in any hurry. Speak for yourself. I've got an idea I'd be better off in jail than having to listen to your preaching. <laughs> well, young man, will you light a spell and let us show our appreciation for your good intentions with some bacon, eggs, and hot coffee? That'd be mighty hard to pass up, Marshal. Just as if that ain't the reason he stopped by in the first place. <sighs> Name's Duke Shannon. Duke Shannon? Say, you wouldn't be the scout from the Christopher Hale wagon train, now, would you? That's right. Oh, I'm mighty pleased to meet you, Jason Hartman. Not Marshal Hartman. Oh, you heard of me, too, then. Sure. <laughs> well, it looks like you and me are a lot more famous than we knew. Now, you just light yourself a spell and tie into a turkey egg while I tell you what a wonderful man I happen to know you to be. <laughs> Everybody know all he's a prisoner if they don't see the leg irons, and they won't even suspect it if they don't know I'm a marshal. Is that important? Yes, it's better for all that way. Huh. Well, there's a doctor on the train. Would you want him to look at the boy? No, morning soon enough. All right. Well, if there's anything else you want, you just let me know. I want to talk to you all. Well, I don't want to listen to you. Well, I don't expect you to just yet, but later maybe you'll remember what I'm going to say. You know, the federal authorities in Dubuque want you real bad. And my guess is they'll do their best to see that you spend 20 years at hard labor. You see, that money you stole from the bank was there to pay the men that work in the lead mines. Now, that's a mighty hard way of life, mining lead. And they deserve to get paid for that kind of labor, but they can't get paid as long as you've got $50,000 of their money. And without pay, they ain't going to work. Now, the government needs that lead. They want the mines to keep operating. Now, for that reason, my guess is they'd cut your stay in prison down to about five years. Maybe less, if you just told them where you hid the money and give it up. How old are you, Hartman? 
50? Oh, give or take a few. Well, now, you take my age and add on to it that 20 years in prison. And I'll still have 10 years to catch up to you. And in that 10 years, I'll be a free man with $50,000. Now, why don't you go on outside and make your speeches to a stick of wood? Because it'll listen to you a darn sight better than I will. Ain't nobody knows where that money is but me. And ain't nobody gonna know. The Almighty knows, Ole. Same as he knew I didn't have to kill you. He knows where that money is. You can't hide anything from him. Believe me. You know, I'll bet a month's pay that old Jason Hartman has met his match this time. Well, I wouldn't want to take your money. I've met upstarts like an oily French before, fighting a one-man war against the whole world, and nobody will make him quit either. What do you know about it, Charles? Huh. Charlie might have a point, Bill. Orley won't listen to a thing the marshal says. He will. This isn't the first outlaw that Jason straightened out. By the way, Jason doesn't want to know that he's a marshal or that Orley is a prisoner. Why? If the people knew he was a prisoner, they'd treat him like one. Well, that's what he is, ain't it? Not to Jason Hartman, it isn't. To him, Orley is just a human being that's got the wrong slant on life. You know, I wouldn't bet too much he won't change Orley's mind. That's what I was saying. I heard you. You know, Jace knows what makes a bandit tick. He was better at that trade himself than the people that he brings in. If he was so good, then how come he got caught? He didn't get caught. Turned himself in, spent his time. For the last 15 years, he's more than made up for the crimes that he committed. I'll still bet a month's pay on that hard-headed bandit. Well, it takes a hard head to know a hard head. <laughs> oh. Judy, Judy, wake up, child. Oh, Daddy, did I wake you up making noises again? I'm sorry. Is it bad, dear? Mm. I can stand it until it goes away. It always goes away. I hear. Take the other one, child. I'll sleep too late in the morning if I do. Oh, Judy, why can't I help you? What good is it being a doctor? All the good in the world, Daddy. You're a wonderful doctor. For everybody but the one I love most. Promise me you wouldn't blame yourself. It isn't your fault that medicine doesn't know everything. Any more than it was Dr. Bronson's or any of the others we consulted in New York. I'm sorry, dear. It's selfish of me to waste your precious time feeling sorry for myself. Just promise me I'll have enough time to get home. I promise. Um, I hope the desert has on her prettiest dress for me. The cactus flowers are so beautiful from my window. Don't try to go on your rounds tomorrow morning without your best helper. I'll never forgive you. Rise and shine, my boy. Rise, he says. Oh, it's a shame you can, Ollie. God's world is beautiful today. The morning sun's out bright and clear, and the dew sparkling on the grass and trees, just like diamonds. Well, good for it. Now, the Lord made such days just to inspire the hearts of men. He never intended for us to stay inside on such a day. So, undo my chain, and I'll go outside and get inspired. Oh, I truly wish I could, Ollie. But listen, I did do the next best thing. I arranged for a couple of visitors for you. Well, unarrange it. Uh, now, you make sure to keep that leg iron covered. Look, I told you I don't want any visitors, and that just means I don't. Is this the patient, Mr. Hartman? Oh, it is indeed, little lady. Now, this here's my young friend, Orly French. Poor boy got on the wrong side of a bullet, I'm afraid. My name's Judy Wilson, Orly. Maybe we'd better take a look at that. You ain't no doctor. I'm a doctor's daughter. But don't worry, I'm just going to prepare you for him. He'll be along in a minute.
Whoever took care of this wound certainly knew what he was doing. Oh, well, I've had quite some experience, that sort of thing. Sorry to be late. Couldn't get away from my last patient. Had to listen to all her troubles for the last 20 years. I think Mr. Hartman should have been a doctor, the way he took care of Orly. Oh, uh, Orly French, this is Dr. Wilson. Hi, well, Orly. How about you? You have any world-shattering problems you want me to listen to? No. Oh, that's a relief. Getting so, I hardly have any time left for doctoring. With all the listening I have to do. Nice clean wound. Or he'll be on your feet in a day or two. I'm glad to hear that, Doctor. You, uh, you didn't say how it happened. Oh, yeah, well, I'm uh, sorry to have to tell you. It's uh, my gun that put the bullet through the boy. Oh, an accident. No. It was uh, more like an act of God, you might say. Oh, Miss Judy, I want to tell you, your presence was like a ray of sunshine of that boy in there. First time I've seen him smile in a good while. <laughs> He did seem a little sober at first. I was wondering why. Well, like all young men these days, a little unsettled about his future. He's downright discouraged. He can't make up his mind about which road to hoe. <laughs> so I was wondering, Miss Judy, if it ain't too much trouble, if you'd drop in and pay Ollie a visit now and again. Kind of cheer him up. I don't know about that, Mr. Hartman. Judy hasn't been feeling too chipper herself these days. I'm fine, Daddy. And I'd be more than happy to do what you ask if you think it would help. Oh, I do indeed, miss. I do indeed. I don't want you overtaxing yourself, dear. Don't worry. It'd be good for me to think of somebody else. Well, thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Miss Judy. Doctor? Good morning. Miss Judy, we heard you'd been ailing. Glad to see you up and about again. Me too. Thank you, Duke. Mr. Wooster, I'm feeling much better this morning. Well, young lady, we'd better get to making the rest of our calls. <laughs> Did you hear that, Duke? She called me Mr. Wooster. She's obviously been raised to respect all elderly people. I reckon. Wait a minute. What do you mean, elderly people? I ain't no elder than you. I'll let you know that. I mean in spirit. I just can't get over what a beautiful young lady you had tending you this morning. Can't remember ever seeing one quite as pretty as that Judith Wilson ever before. How about you, Ollie? I didn't notice. A young man like you of an age just right for looking at pretty girls, and you didn't notice? That's what I said, didn't I? Do you know what it says in here about telling untruths? No, and I don't care either. Well, I suppose you're right in a way. Not paying particular attention to a pretty girl, I mean. No future in that when you're in prison. <laughs> yes, sirree. Twenty years, big chunk out of a man's life, all right. Twenty years being cut off from the rest of the world. Being cheated out of everything that's good in this life. Look, Hartman, I ain't telling you where I hid that money, so you might as well quit trying. Now, Ollie, every man's got a right to his share of happiness and the right to find it in his own way. You already know my way. But there's no happiness to be found in violating the laws of God. There's only misery to be found in the evil of your way. But there is a way out, son. It's promised in this book. Now, you listen. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Oh, why don't you shut up? Don't close your mind, the only salvation boy. Open up your ears and let the words open up your heart. Leave me alone. Don't you see what your sins have cost you already? You got a right to walk free in the face of the earth, the right to do what other men do. The right to look at a pretty face, to get married, to find happiness. Don't throw away your only chance, boy. Listen to the Lord's promise. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. He'll forgive you, Orly. The Almighty will forgive you your sins, just as he forgave me mine. Believe me, boy, it's the only way. No, no! He'll even forgive you for that, Orly. Don't you ever do that again. 
Don't you ever come pounding that Bible at me again. The law says I gotta go to jail for what I've done. That's all right. But I don't have to take that in the bargain. There ain't a law that says I gotta take that. Now I say it, all. I'm not half through with you yet. I'm warning you. There's good new boy, and I'm gonna bring it out. Now, this ain't the first time you've seen a Bible. Otherwise, you wouldn't get so fired up about hearing it. Now, it's one thing to go against the laws of God without knowing what they are. But when you do know, and you violate them anyway, that's when you're in real trouble. That's when you can't stand to hear it. Ain't there any way I can make you shut up? No way in the world, Ollie. Oh. 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 Why don't you leave me alone? Because you don't want to be left alone. You've got a big temptation tearing at your insides. $50,000 worth of temptation. And you want help to overcome it. And I'm going to give you that help. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. And when he has tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. I thought it might start bleeding again, Ollie. But it didn't. You just lie there and rest a while. Give you a chance to think things over. We'll go fix ourselves. I just came in to see you. Well, just Betty did. I, I'm sorry if my being here upsets you. I, I brought you something, Orly. Something for your supper. A few days ago, we passed by some wild crab apple trees, and my father picked a whole bushel. I made it myself. It's still hot. Mr. Hartman tell you to do that, too? Uh, I'll just leave the pie here. I'll come see you some other time. Now, Miss Judy, please, don't go. My father jokes about hearing other people's troubles, but I don't mind if, if you want to talk about it. Who says I've got any troubles? Anybody who looks as unhappy as you do must have. You ever read this? Of course. My parents saw to that, didn't yours? I don't know. I don't know that I ever had any. As far as I know, I was born in an orphanage. With no Bible there, nobody to read it to me either. Till I was eight. Then a farmer took me so I could work for him. Indenture? That's what he called it. He used to read the Bible two hours every night after supper. And he'd make me sit there and listen to him. He must have been a good man then. And then he'd... He'd beat me during the day with a broken hoe handle. Read the Bible to me at night and beat me during the day. He was a good man, all right. Starting with the minute he was lying on the ground, stopped breathing. All kinds of people read the Bible, Orly for all kinds of reasons. I wonder what his reason was. Satan can be found in many disguises. But that doesn't mean you can't find the truth for yourself in that book. You can't be over 17. 18. <laughs> but you talk like such a wise old owl. Sometimes, some of us have reason to grow up faster than others. Sometimes it's most important that we do. Sometime, maybe you'll tell me your troubles. What makes you think I have any troubles? Anybody with as pretty a... with as pretty a face as yours couldn't possibly have any troubles. 
You're right, Orly. Life is too short to have troubles. And the next time I come to see you, we'll talk only about the good things. The world is full of good things, Orly. And if we just think about them, we won't have any time for trouble. No time for trouble. All right, Judy. From now on, there'll be no time for trouble. One thing I don't like about cooking is doing the dishes. You know, I haven't seen that pretty little girl around here all day. Don't suppose that to have nothing to do with that sour look on your face, do you? No, I don't suppose. Then I expect you're not interested in where she's been. What I mean is, if I knew, I wouldn't have to bother telling you, would I? Do you know? I might. Well, do you? Mm-hmm. Well, you gonna tell me or not? Sure, son, I'll tell you. I saw a pa, and he said he made to stay in bed today. In bed? What's the matter? She hurt or something? No, just wasn't feeling up to snuff, according to what the doctor said. You know, she'd been ailing a little bit before she started coming to see you. No, I didn't know. But she wouldn't let anything stand in the way of her visits to you, Ollie. <laughs> No, sir, Reed. She took a shine of you that first day, I could tell. Uh... Marshal... You wouldn't happen to know how m Miss Judy is tonight. Hmm? I, I mean, right now. Well, I haven't heard since noon, since I talked to her pa. Huh. But... Gee, Marshal, I, I'd sure like to know. Uh, you don't think you could... Uh, Find out. Please, Mr. Hartman. Well, son, I... I think I can do better than that. Now, you better take it easy at first. You've been there quite a spell. You might have forgotten how to walk. Too, sure. Oh, this is as far as I'm going, Ollie. Are you out of your mind? Oh, I don't think so. Now, her wagon's the third one behind us. You mean you're gonna let me go down there alone? And back alone. What if I decide not to come back? Oh, you won't do that. How do you know? Oh, same reason you want to go there in the first place. And I don't blame you for being a little sweet on her, son. She's a fine little lady. Worked out just like you planned, didn't it? I had a little help, Ollie. You sure are a strange one, Marshal. You do beat all. Oh, uh, and Ollie, don't forget. You know that fella that caught you the first time can catch you again. Just in case. Looks like we kind of traded places, doesn't it? I'm so glad to see you. Come on in. Hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, no, I was just lying here waiting for Daddy to get back from seeing a patient. Well, sit down. Tell me what you've been doing today. Oh, me? Nothing much. I, I just laid around. I didn't get up till a couple of minutes ago. One thing I did today, I... I missed you. I miss seeing you, too. I don't know why I had to get this silly pain today. And Daddy insisted that I stay right here in bed. But I'm feeling much better now. Well, I sure am glad to hear that. Another thing I, 
I did today. I, I did a lot of thinking. Well, what about? Oh, lots of things. Everything. There's something I gotta tell you, Judy. It's about a girl. You didn't tell me you had a girl, early. Well, I haven't, exactly. I, I love her, but I don't know how she feels. You see, there's something about me she doesn't know, and I'm afraid that... When she, afraid of what she think when she finds out. But I've decided to... to tell her. Feeling the way I do about her, it, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't. I think you're right. You can't love without being truthful. It's more than that. She'd have to wait, Judy. Maybe five years. I'll be in prison. Well, I, I didn't know. Do you think a girl could wait that long? I mean, do you think a decent girl could ever love a criminal? It would depend on the crime, Morley. Some are easier to forget than others. I, I took some money. A lot of money. But I'm going to give it back. Maybe it'd only be a couple of years so she'd have to wait. For a man who is willing to admit he's made a mistake and then try to undo it? She'll wait, Orly. If she loves you, she'll wait. Well, I sure I'm glad I decided to give the money back. Makes me feel good. First time in my life. Oh, another thing, Judy. Yes, Orly? That, that girl that I love, the one you said could wait. It's you. Well, I realized it when you didn't come to see me today. I just couldn't stand it without you. Judy, I, I love you. No, please. Only think. But, but you, you said that... I'm sorry, Only. I'm, I'm so sorry. I had no idea you were talking about me. I should have told you first. Then you could have given me different answers. That's not it, Only. There's something else. I'll have to explain. You've already explained. Orly, it isn't that I couldn't love you. No, it's just that you couldn't love a thief. Once a thief, always a thief. You're right. I'll never change. I'm sorry I ever thought about it. That's not it, Orly, please. Thanks for keeping me from making the biggest mistake of my life. A $50,000 mistake. Oh, Orly, please come back. Please. I've got to tell you. Going, Marshal. What time is it? Uh, well, it's near ten o'clock, and uh, I was uh, just going out for a stroll before turning in. I'll bet. <clears throat> Thought you were going for a stroll. Oh well, I don't really need one, boy. Uh, now that I come back, you mean? Why did you admit you were coming looking for me? You haven't trusted me from the beginning, and I don't blame you. What do you think about that? I wouldn't trust anybody either. Not you, nor that girl you got to do your dirty work. What happened to you tonight, Orly? I found out I was right and you were wrong. There's nobody in this world that I can believe. You can believe me? You can believe the Almighty? I can believe $50,000, and I can believe that I'm going to keep it. That's dirty money, boy. It'll bring you nothing but misery, I know. Yeah? Yeah, I guess you do know, Marshal. I guess you know about money. I guess you know as well as anybody else that one kind of money spends as good as another. I know about misery, too, son. Marshal, you remember that little town of Johnsonville you was trailing me through? Yeah. Well, you came near to catching me there because I had to take time to hide that money. You're freaking out and telling me where it is? 
You want me to, don't you? Yes, sir. I've prayed. You don't know how much I've prayed. Well, I'll just bet you have. I'll just bet you've prayed and prayed and prayed. What are you driving at, boy? Why, your prayers are going to get answered, Marshal. That's what I'm driving at. One or two days, and this wagon train will put us right back near to Johnsonville again. That's when I'm going to take you and show you where I buried that $50,000. Now, how do you like the sound of that? You know, son, for a minute there, I thought I'd lost you. Or maybe a better question would be, how do you like the sound of $25,000? $25,000 in your pocket, $25,000 in mine. What are you saying, boy? Oh, come now, Marshal. How can an old bandit like you get so all fired up over a little business deal? I make no deals with the devil. The devil? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what Judy said. She said Satan was likely to turn up in the darndest places. And maybe that's what I am. Satan. <laughs> Satan making a bargain with the messenger of the Lord. Only I ain't getting me behind thee, Marshal. I'm gonna stay right here in front of you. Now, what do you say? We take that $50,000 and split it. And you go your way and I go mine. And there's nobody knows any different. Nobody. You get in that wagon. I ain't heard your answer, Marshal. Who's looking at my answer? $25,000. $25,000 all yours and no questions. Get in that wagon. You ain't kidding me, Marshal. You used to rob banks, too, and for the same reason as me. Deep down inside, you got a real feeling for money. $25,000, Marshal. Think of what you used to do with that kind of money. The things you used to buy. You shut up and get in there. Remember the feel of it, Marshal, the weight of it in your pocket. Do you remember the feel of that much money? Don't you know what $25,000 feels like? Think of it, Marshal. $25,000. What's the matter, Marshal? What's the matter? How come you're getting so all fired up? You start remembering, huh? You put up quite a battle, Ollie. But you forgot one thing. You're outnumbered. I want to know what made you think you had the right to do what you did to my daughter. I never touched her. You were there, you saw her, you talked to her. Now she's lying there sobbing her heart out. I knew something happened tonight. What was it, Ollie? Why don't you ask Judy? Nobody's asking Judy anything. Nobody's talking to her again. She doesn't have the time to waste a minute in tears, not one minute. Well, I didn't ask her to shed tears, and I didn't ask her to come visit me in the first place. She's got no reason to cry. I really don't think you know, do you? Know what? Judy is sick, very sick. There's nothing that could ever be done for her. She's just trying to stay alive until we can get home. Please, don't see her again. Don't waste any more of her precious minutes. I'm sorry, Ollie. I didn't know. If I did, I wouldn't let this happen to you. What can I do? All, all the things I said to her, I never meant to hurt her. I, I love her. Oh, help me. Oh, please, help me. Please, help me. Thee. Hear the pleadings of this tormented soul. Admit him to your kingdom. Give him his sins as he begs you to cleanse his soul. Ah, don't tell me you put this rock in place all by yourself. Now, there's a lot of things you can do with it. U.S. Marshal, on your trail. 
Bully, it looks like it's all there. Well, we better count it. Oh, we don't have to do that. Nobody could have got to it the way you had it hidden. Come on. We don't just take a couple of minutes. Give me a hand. Here you go. Well, come on. It'll go a lot faster with both of us doing it. down. <laughs> you act like you've never seen this much money before. Oh, only I've seen this much money before, just not lately, that's all. Huh. How much you got counted? Huh? In the pile. Oh. 38, huh? You know, only I can remember spending as much as $3,800 in one night. One time I paid a bill of $4,000 of the Golden Slipper in San Francisco, food and drink for the house for the whole night. Oh, I was a big spender, Ollie. <laughs> you wouldn't believe some of the things I did. You see, I always worked alone, never had to split my take with anybody. Anytime I run out of money, I just go rob a bank and get some more. Never did get caught, you know. One time I got on the wrong side of a bullet, though, and I hid out in a mission. An old padre took care of me. Showed me there on my way. But Ole, well, it just took me a long time to get over that feeling of having money. You know, it's like a sickness. Guess you can understand that. What you said to me yesterday. You know, feeling having money in your hand. That feeling deep down inside of you. Wanting all the things that money can buy. Having it in your pocket. Feeling it in your hand. Oh, no, wait a minute, Ole. Just a minute. We ain't finished counting it yet. Later will do just as good. We can count that later, too. You know, there's nothing quite like the feeling of having money in your hand, is there? Give me the money, Marshal. I guess you haven't got over that feeling either, have you? The money. Give it to me. You know, I can still hear what you said to me yesterday. Fifty thousand dollars. Marshal. $25,000 in my pocket and $25,000 in yours. That's what you said, Ollie. Well, that was yesterday. Now, come on, Marshal. Let's not josh me anymore. $25,000 apiece, Ollie. What are you doing? You had no right to show it to me. You had no right to stuff this money in my hand. I'm not going to let you do it. You're not going to get any of it, Ollie. I'm going to keep it all for myself. You're going to take none of it. get back yet? Not yet. But there's somebody else here to see you. Oh, Orly, please don't say anything. I know how it must have felt when Daddy talked to you. But it wasn't your fault you didn't know anything about me. I, I just didn't want you feeling sorry for me. And I still don't. But I had to see you. I had to know everything was all right between us. I'm glad you came. I need a wise old Al to talk to. About Mr. Hartman? Do you know, Judy, he had me on my knees with a Bible in his hand. That's how he convinced me that, that I should give back the money. And all the time, he was just trying to find where I'd hidden the money for himself. Are you sure about that? Maybe he was sincere in all the things he said to you. He stole the money, didn't he? And you stole the money in the first place. But you're not all bad. Nobody is. Some of us just give in to temptation sometimes. That's all. I wish I could believe that about him. But how can I after what's happened? How can I believe in anything? Ollie, you have to. You're the one who is important. 
What you think and what you do are what should really count with you. But don't you know what it means if I give myself up now? If I go back without that money, I'll go to jail for 20 years. Do you know how old I'll be when I get out? I'll be... Oh, Judy, I'm sorry. I... I don't want you to think about me. I know why you came to visit me all those times. You were trying to help me. Even now, you're trying to tell me that my only chance is to pay for what I've done. And you know that's right, because you've already faced up to life. And you can do that because you've already faced up to death. But I haven't. I don't have that kind of courage yet. I wish I had for your sake. For my sake. So you'd know you really had helped another human being. I wish I could give you that. I owe you that much. But I can't. What will you do? Leave. Now, before Duke and the men get back, I should have never come here in the first place. I don't think Hartman will mind if I take his rifle. I paid enough for it. Orly, you said you owed me something. Yes. Before you go, Kiss me. I don't think I should do that. I want you to. Why? Because I want you to always remember what it's like to be kissed by someone who loves you. Judy. And know that it can never happen again if you lose respect for yourself. Because without that, you'll never be able to love again. Or be loved. I can't do that. Huh? You must. Even do. Well, I hope nobody tries to stop me. I thought you decided to take the money back to Dubuque. My reasons for that are as dead as what you've got on that horse. You were the one said I could believe in Hartman. What do you think now? I still think so. After what he's done? You don't know everything he did. Well, I know one thing. He was careless enough to let you catch him. I'm not so sure he was careless. Harvey Bates here stumbled onto him, and Jason forced him into a gunfight. Then you must be awfully good, mister. Only behind a plow, son. I'm a farmer. This was Jason's. See how it's loaded. Somebody's emptied it. No one's touched it since it fell from Jason's hand. We found something else where he'd camped. His Bible. It was open to this page. No way exactly telling what he'd been reading. Thought maybe you might know. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, 